Good morning. You're listening to FloridaLA.net, and I'm Kemp Parr. This morning, my guest is Dave Trepke, the CEO of Universal Metro, based in L.A. Dave, how you doing? Kemp, I'm doing great. I'm glad that we have a chance to catch up on what the industry's doing. Yeah, I heard that you won an award. Number seven, best small size company in L.A. A little background uh, for those people who may not know. You're a StarNet member. For many years, you focused on health care. You're non-union, and you service that, you know, L.A.'s got, what, like five big counties, and you service that area down there, right? Mm -hmm. That is correct, yeah, since 1982. So we're actually celebrating 40th year in business, 40 years this year. So it's kind of a little nice perk that our team got to acknowledging their hard work being one of the top places to work. So I was uh, really proud of our team. When did you start with the firm? I started in 1990, so 32 years ago. I had a stint with the resource companies, yes, in the early mid 90s too. All right, and how's business doing right now? Business is consistent. I do believe there's going to be a slight tightening of some of the projects just due to a financial strengthening of the market, causing concerns to builders and developers that it just doesn't pencil out on paper. So it'll, it'll take them a while to figure out, okay, what's it going to cost? And I think then it will slow down just a tad for us. I think that's probably in 23. I don't think we'll see that in 22, but 23, maybe in the latter parts of 23. So inflation is going to have an effect, you think? And as I mentioned earlier, your focus was on hospitals and health care, and you've kind of broadened that, haven't you? We have broadened that. We were that in the early 90s. We're actually heading back to a little bit to our roots. Back in 1982, we actually did relay work and turns and senior living facilities. That senior living facility work actually led to health care, which led to us to being the industry leader, at least on the West Coast, because we had about 135 accounts that we serviced. Uh, but what's happening on the West Coast, changes are up front uh, for multifamily. The GCs locally, they're starting to use some of the larger GCs to do the work, just to the sophistication level that's needed for the projects. So we've actually been asked by a lot of our clients to do that work, so we have figured out how we're going to do it. I guess as expensive as housing is, L.A. is going to become more and more of a of kind of a rental area, right? I mean, it's all, all you can afford for the people, especially millennials, right? You're 100% accurate. The two Senate bills that were passed in California will pretty much cause many of the projects to go from, let's say, a single-family type project to a multifamily type project, just better use of land and more people yeah. can actually live there. And so you're seeing that change. T- talk a little bit about, yeah, I know you're one of those that likes to have a purpose and a vision. Talk a, talk a little bit about what you're doing as far as the changes you're making there. We have really begun to, how do we really build leaders? That's been our vision for years. And how do we build them on a foundation of integrity, just being a firm of character? The idea is that we want to train them so they, you know, they can go anywhere and work for anyone. But the idea is to build opportunities around them so they stay and stay with the firm for their entirety. We want to equip them, enable them, and empower them. It's been a calling that I've, of mine for years, and I really believe that by doing so, we'll have a sustainable company, and then that serves our customers. Actually, if you know the ancient history on your company, that's kind of why. I mean, Southwestern Publishing owned it for a while. I mean, that's why they bought it was to build leadership. So uh, that's what you continue to focus on. Ironically, that is 100% accurate. They had bought it from the Hillis brothers back in the early 90s. I was actually uh, part of the leadership team back then. So I've had quite a journey, performance-based, making people better and greater and, than themselves and having impact and influence and what I would actually call significance in their life. Uh-huh. Okay. And you've expanded. You've got offices now in L.A. and Phoenix. Is that right? Both the L.A. and Orange County, of course, and other five counties, we have presence or satellite space, but we've also opened offices in Phoenix and in Las Vegas. Okay. And is that also multifamily work primarily, or is it just a mix? Well, one of those was our healthcare clients were starting to expand to those markets because their end users were uh, expanding to those markets. The other is multifamily. Uh, The same regional builders seem to be the regional people. And you got to be able to actually service that customer. And again, that same servicing of your customer helps you sustain your company. It's a win-win. How are you celebrating this anniversary? Have you already done it or is it coming up? It's all year, uh, but we're going to have a big celebration where we invite vendors and clients and, of course, staff and, and to, to the event. So, And we're actually starting to just begin to market that. We have kind of held off just for a little bit, but it's really since 1982. So it is during our 40th year. And it is very exciting to be part of something that's lasted that long. 
So you're having an event later this year? We are during Christmas time. We're going to combine our Christmas okay. party with it. We felt that was the best use of time, energy, and funds. One time we talked and you said that you didn't like doing it, but if, if you client, you like to focus on the end user, the facility people. And if, if they're asking you to do labor only work, you'll do it, but you'd prefer to get the whole package, right? Yeah, we still do service clients that ask us to do that. And have helped my fellow Starnet dealers that uh, work out of market and into our market and help them do their labor. Uh, it's not a uh, desire market, but it is a market. It does keep your, your labor teams busy. Uh, of course, when you're really, you know, full, how do you, you know, best do that? So we've got a couple plans internally uh, on how to help sustain that even yeah. long term. So it, yeah. I'm careful with my words there because it's a, it's a long-term plan I really haven't put in place yet. All right. I mean, let me ask you, you know, StarNet had this long gap with no meeting thanks to COVID. We've kind of missed the networking and camaraderie. So looking forward to getting more of that in. You coming to the fall meeting? I will be at the fall meeting and very much looking forward to it. There, there's nothing like an in-person meeting. The synergy is incredible. All right. So you think business is going to be good through at least into 23? I do, at least for the commercial dealer. For yeah. residential dealer, I still think there's people that are uh, have, have cash though they want to invest. So I, I'm everything I've seen says that. And by the way, that's not from the media. That's from my own sources that I talk to and research and kind of put the picture together. Yeah. Okay, Dave. Well, it's great to catch up with you. Appreciate you spending time with our audience again. Been talking to Dave Trepke, the CEO of Universal Metro, based in LA, and you've been listening to Kemp R and FloorDaily.net.